This is the, the custom rap star and here I use uh, tense so I use mm. it for distortion stuff and typing stuff you know I, I normally use tense because nines are too thin I think for me um, I think these are the Dario and this is the 720B and these are actually Tomastic 12s and mm. this one I use it for jazz stuff mainly clean uh, less powered pickups than the, the custom one, so I, I think it's really good. If you want to go 100% finger style on the electric guitar, you need to have some nails. I yeah. likely have uh, very strong nails, so I don't have this kind of problem, so I always use natural nails. Perché se vogliamo, il vantaggio del plettro è che è più semplice suonare nella stessa corda, perché hai solo questo movimento su e giù. Sì. Eh, lo svantaggio magari è i salti di corda, eh, dover seguire gli sweep a tempo per esempio perché molto spesso eh, il, lo sweep classico del plettro è eh, avanti e indietro a velocità eh, a, a, al massimo delle tue possibilità, ecco, uno dei pochi che riesce ad avere la, il controllo ritmico è per esempio a frame gambale. gambale. This is the rest stroke technique, so I... These are, uh, these are more like uh, a bass technique, you know? Uh, and this is the free stroke technique, it's more like a classical approach. So I okay. mainly use uh, this approach for, uh, you know, chromatic ideas or like uh, three note per string scales. Questa tecnica con l'appoggiato, per esempio il classico pattern alla Malmsteen. In questo modo ovviamente col, col suono clean rend, rende di più l'idea. Are the patterns on the same string? So you know the famous Malmsteen pattern. Um, these are uh, really difficult things with fingers because you have you have to you need to be really precise and uh, for for that kind of stuff, I mostly use this kind of bass technique. With, are you alternating I and M or I and M and A as well? I, I, I use all three. So uh, always uh, like the tremolo thing. Um, I, no, no, it's, it's the opposite. So like uh, um, A, M, I, A, M, I, okay. That's, that's very interesting. Because that's pretty different to, like, mostly, you know, when I was studying with finger style guitar teachers, if we were playing lines, we'd be just alternating I and M back and forth. Um, I, it's a bit more limited I, like that. Like, you, you know, for two, two not per strings pattern, it's okay. Yes. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I found myself more comfortable be, with that because the right hand is more relaxed. Uh, that's so great. Like, I can, you know, play this kind of... Even if it's not incredibly clean, but you need to have uh, short nails for that, I think. Uh, because if you have a longer nail than the other ones, you kind of get get stuck in the, in the strings and uh, it's not a comfortable way to play if you have too long, too long nails. Parlo con questa tecnica. Certo. Con la tecnica bassistica invece faccio ehm, di solito cose un po' più vicine tra loro, quindi tre note per corda o magari le frasi cromatiche sono più adatte per questo tipo di tecnica bassistica. I always use this this one so if I have three notes on the same string I use the ring finger so
So this one is. Uh, I always use uh, like um, this. Yeah, it, you're almost doing um, pointer finger economy picking. That's basically. Uh, Yeah, that's kind of a uh, economy picking stuff. So I always use, like, like for example, this pattern here. It's a mix of uh, uh, economy finger, <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> the bass technique rather than the classical technique. If you were to give a beginner, somebody a beginner in this technique, um, you know, a couple of things to work on. Like here, here's an intro to this. What should they do? Uh, I think they should start to, uh, you know, play the, the, the cliches, the most famous patterns. So like start with the... Uh... Right. Of course, it sounds boring if you play like that. So I think you can apply some uh, strange stuff. Yeah. Sometimes um, if I have to play these groupings, it's a mix between the two and, uh, and also the ring finger. It's really a mess. I, I don't really know how I play it, but <laughs> it's sometimes I'm not really aware of the fingering I'm using. Mm. This is yeah. a, um, a for this kind of arpeggios up and down. I always use the um, classical technique. So without uh, appoggiato in, in Italian. Uh, so appoggiato is rest stroke, yeah. uh, and and tocco libero is uh, free stroke basically. So this is the free stroke. The concept behind that is uh, that I'm able to perform all the arpeggio family with the same fingering with my right hand. So if I have to do a minor seven arpeggio. And I always use the same um, order with the fingers. So I, I don't have to think about my right hand. I only have to think about the fingering on my left hand. It's something I'm working on still now. I, I think that's the advantage of the fingers because uh, uh, when you do something like that with the pick, you have to uh, like sweeping or string skipping. And the problem with sweeping I think for me is that it's only a one straight up movement so you you need to work on a lot on the rhythmic control of that movement so if you if you're sweeping you're probably playing arpeggios like that 
and and that's okay it's it's a pretty uh, you know um, fast arpeggio but if you want to have uh, um, you know you, you want to start from different points during the arpeggio or something like that uh, you can achieve this with fingers by staying here this is a pretty um, easy way to do it with fingers, but with the pick, you have to skip the strings and then go down and then go up again. It's it's a really hard thing to do with the pick. So I think the the, the main uh, idea behind that is that the pick is easier on the same string, but fingers are easier on different strings. E questa tecnica col tocco libero. Yeah, the first stroke, uh, because when I play the rest stroke, the, the palm is here, so I can't use it right. for, for the palm muting. When I play like this, I can use some palm muting. I, I never mm -hmm. use it too much. Like something like that. And... If, if I have to play something similar like that with the yeah. rest stroke, yeah, I can play it, but not at full speed. This is with the, uh, the classical stroke, with the free stroke. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if I have to do these kind of arpeggios, I always play with my right hand like that. Yes. If I have to play like... You know, close lines, I remember that I played something... Uh... This is basically a 2-5-1 using the... Uh... Uh, the diminished scale. And so if I have to play like, uh, you know, the, the classic beep of lines, I always use th this technique, so... For most of the things, I came up with my own thing because the classical way is different. I also use a different approach for the right hand. The, the classical right hand is slightly different than mine. This is just a minor triad starting from uh, uh, fifth string with my pink. So which which order is the right hand fingers in? So oh, the order is. Uh, um, okay, I, I have to remember the. You could say P I M A P I M. Okay, so P I M A. This is very basic. And here I I use the the two fingers. Uh, medium and index and then so okay right so p i m a p m i p p i m a m i like that yes so it's like you're going oh right that makes sense that makes sense. That makes sense. I never do. I never do that. Like uh, index and medium. I always do this kind of tremolo thing. Going right. Up. Even if I'm starting with the medium, I always do this mm. kind of tremolo stuff. And this is basically the the pattern I work on when I'm uh, uh, warming up. There is only a pull off here, yeah, and and then you have to uh, medium index A M I, 
A M I P A M I P。Cercherò di cambiare col suono distorto. Spero mm. non ti arrivi troppo segnale. Vai, vai.